Thank you, Councillor Braithwaite. I, uh, but everybody was doing what I was asking. I was just asking people to turn on their video and they were doing it. So how could I possibly have been muted? Uh, I'm ready to call the meeting to order at 7.01. Uh, as we start, we just want to acknowledge that we're gathered on the traditional territories of the Coast and Strait Salish peoples, specifically the Lekwungen speaking people known today as the Songhees and the Esquimalt First Nations, and that their connections to these lands continue to this day. Uh, up first on the agenda is just an approval of the agenda. And uh, I see Councillor Patterson and I, uh, oh, is that moved and seconded? Uh, is there any changes or corrections? I just want to clarify, I gave uh, Councillor Patterson some advice that she needed to change the agenda to put a notice of motion and that's not required. Uh, so if that's not, if you don't need to do that, I'll do that under new business at the end of the meeting. So perfect, thank you. Uh, any other changes to the agenda? Not seeing any, I'm call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Seeing none opposed, that passes, thank you. Uh, moving on to item 3.1, we have the minutes of the February 8th council meeting. Can I get a mover and a seconder to approve? Moved and seconded, thank you. Uh, is there any corrections, changes? Not seeing any, I will call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed, that passes, thank you very much. Uh, my remarks will be brief, but uh, as you, our council, I'm sure are aware, uh, but for the public, the municipal hall is now uh, closed, which limits our ability to meet with, uh, with the public on site. Um, people are working out of ATCO trailers and from home for the next couple of few months. Um, so just people, to give people a heads up, also the uh, pathway, the roadway through is closed off as well. Um, the marina feedback for the uh, phase two, the public community amenities portion, um, that feedback, process is still open and just encourage people to uh, to provide that feedback on the two uh, proposals that are in front. I uh, want to just also let people know that the call is still out for volunteers from the Heritage, for the Heritage Commission and for the Public Arts Advisory Committee. And so if you're interested in serving on one of those committees, please do put your name forward, uh, ideally by the end of this week. Um, I just want to just say how I, <clears throat> I was on a call today with Minister uh, Osborne and Malcolmson uh, to talk about mental health and addiction and homelessness uh, with mayors from all across Vancouver Island. And it was just interesting to hear how similar uh, the issues and concerns were. But I will say that the provincial government is doing an enormous amount to try and bring services online um, to address. So they're, they seem uh, particularly uh, ramping up the middle. Um, so I think the uh, the most difficult to treat and house are at one end and the and the prevention at the other end are still uh, works in progress but the uh, I just want to express my appreciation to all the all the communities across the, the island that are dealing with the issue and uh, and the province for for helping out um, and last but not least I just want to say I just want to express my appreciation for members of council these meetings are are uh, can be difficult uh, and awkward through the video um, but I just want to uh, remind the public and staff and council just uh, we take uh, the respectful workplace incredibly seriously and so I just want to express my appreciation for anybody who's addressing council and all the councillors uh, for just always keeping that high tone that we have here and uh, it really carries things a long way so I just wanted to express that. With that, uh, we'll move on to item 5.1, uh, notices under notices of motion. So um, my apologies on this one, I, uh, but I just think it's a good reminder for all of us and probably for the public. Um, under our new procedures bylaw, notices with 10 days of notice can come onto the notices of motion. So this is a motion for debate tonight, not just a motion for uh for notice so if uh, i was confused by that until about an hour ago so a little less so uh if you're reading this uh just read it with that mind that in mind um and councillor nay you do not have to read the whereas clauses but i think it would be appropriate if you read aloud the therefore be it resolved portion of this uh, motion as you're bringing it forward okay thank you and mr mayor if i may just say in your opening remarks which i really appreciate but um the remarks you um, conveyed regarding the updates regarding mental addictions uh, mental health and addictions is there any way council can be briefed and i i say that because i'm asked frequently uh as i um, move around the community like what is happening and it's sometimes difficult to like you kind of hear this piece and that piece and it's difficult to put it all together and um, yeah so I'm wondering if there's any way you could help us understand so that when we meet our public we can also convey with a more knowledgeable understanding of, of, of what's going on. 
So yeah, it's off topic, but yes, I'm happy to answer the question because uh, I think these things were important. Uh, yes, I, 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 my understanding at the re end of that call was that the two ministers were going to put together a briefing that they could share with me and I could share with council. Uh, so that'll include some of the, both the, uh, the current and uh, intended new uh, you know, programs and grants uh, available. And there are some new grants uh, being announced currently uh, in the last week that, uh, that also allow for support for neighborhood community organizations and municipalities to provide some additional supports. Uh, so there are some interesting pieces I think council would be interested in and I'll definitely share those with you. Thank but you very much. Okay, so to the, um, the topic of this item, Mr. Mayor, um, therefore it be resolved. Uh, the municipality of Oak Bay write a letter to the Minister of Environment and climate change strategy, the Ministry of Energy Mines and Low Carbon Innovation, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and the Attorney General and Minister Responsible for Housing and the Minister of Finance, expressing its endorsement of the Help Cities Lead campaign. Uh, support for the direction set out in the November 2020 ministerial mandate letters regarding GHG requirements for new buildings, PACE financing, and home energy labeling, and also requesting that the province empower local governments to opt to take action if they so choose on the two remaining items of the Help Cities Leads campaign, namely GHG requirements for existing buildings and building energy benchmarking. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ney. Uh, is there a seconder uh, for this motion? Seconded, thank you. Uh, Councillor Ney, you have provided the background information, but uh, I'll give you the chance here just to, uh, since in case anybody read it without thinking about uh, the, the nuances, you can just give a high level perhaps summary of what, uh, what it is you're attending here. Well, um, council may have seen this email that was circulated to all of us from uh, Councillor Will Cole Helmeton. And uh, uh, I've been involved with the climate caucus as I know that many, uh, several of the councillors here have been, and specifically with the Help Cities Lead, as well as the Vancouver Island Climate Action Planning Committee of which Will Cole Hamilton is part of it. So he has really initiated uh, this, um, this uh, um, action here that is uh, included in, in the motion. And essentially uh, what it does is it, it serves a, a very consistent suite of initiatives to support our recommendation for that, uh, com that came out of the uh, climate uh, action committee uh, chaired by Councillor Appleton. Uh, that speaks to a reduction in GHGs in existing and new home um, buildings, uh, which would include retrofits as well as um, energy um, uh, new builds. Uh, the issue uh, for us in OPE, as was described very clearly by staff in a 20, uh, December 2020 uh, staff report, is that uh, it's very challenging for local governments uh, to take action on this particular goal. Uh, indeed, it makes a lot of sense to, there's a lot of rationale, a, a very good strong case to be had in terms of uh, strategic initiatives to reduce um, GHGs since um, they, they um, account for somewhere between 40 and 60% of GHGs in most communities. Um, but without uh, support from uh, the provincial government, municipal um, uh, jurisdictions have very have no or very uh, little authority to enact many of the strategies and initiatives that it would would be required to achieve that goal. So, in this letter, um, in this motion, uh, the, um, the 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 request really is to support the work of Help Cities Lead Campaign to lobby uh, the various ministries to enact this um, suite of initiatives. The regulating GSG emissions on, um, on, on new builds as well as the home energy labeling uh, initiative and the PACE initiative are each uh, initiatives that are currently in various ministry mandate letters which means they're, they're very likely working on these initiatives, 
But in addition, uh, the motion calls for, uh, so, so this motion really is about writing a letter to the, the respective ministries supporting and advocating for, um, for, for implementation of, um, of, of, reg, uh, of legislation that gives uh, municipal government that authority. Uh, but there are two um, initiatives regulating GHG emissions for existing buildings, as well as building energy benchmarks, uh, which are not part of the ministry um, mandate um, letters uh, that lead, help cities lead is also advocating to make a more complete suite of initiatives to work towards reduction of GHGs. So basically council, the, the, the motion asks for us to support the work of Help Cities Lead, which uh, they're, they're very organized, very uh, focused and um, um, ha ha are moving along to uh, having um, um, discussions with the various ministers uh, and um, um, so, and also to support uh, these, these to, to, to support the writing of a letter to each of the respective ministers and to support these initiatives. Uh, th thank you, Councillor Ney. I have Councillor Patterson and Councillor Zelka. Thank you, Mayor, and through you, um, thank you, Councillor Ney, for bringing this to the table. I, um, uh, I support certainly the initiative, but I would like clarification as to um, the greater intent behind this. I know there's support certainly to ministers, but it was this also um, to, to bring the program into Oak Bay. Certainly um, I understand the PACE or Property Assessed Clean Energy Program, uh, the application of it um, and the, especially the way it's gonna be managed for commercial buildings. It's less clear to me that it um, would benefit homeowners um, and, and the housing market. I mean, it's really, especially the, the benchmarking performance part of it is more difficult to apply on, on that. I do understand that um, the city of Victoria and the district of Saanich um, are, are strong advocates for this and we'll work with um, Boma BC uh, to in fact initiate uh, the PACE program and their goal, their end goal is to become a 2030 um, district, uh, one of only two in Canada. The only other one I understand is Toronto and I have no doubt that Toronto is going to try and become the biggest district 2030 in North America. And they have a, they've been at it for over a decade. So they have a, they have every, um, opportunity to probably gain that designation. In Victoria, it's, it's a later start. And I, I really think it's a great program for those districts to be to undertake. So is the intent in your bringing this forward to try and um, uh, also get the buildings in the district? And I would think certainly then that would affect our municipal buildings, although it could also um, um, impact other commercial buildings. Is it to get everyone involved in the program? Um, because I think that that would have more implications for how, um, in addition to supporting it through writing to ministers, how it would be resourced for implementing a program like that here in the district. Thank you, Councillor Patterson and Councillor Ney. Thank you, Councillor um, Patterson, through you, Mayor. Um, to the Council and, and Councillor Patterson specifically, um, great question. And really, this is really supporting um, the advocacy of asking the province to create an enabling uh, legislation mm -hmm. so that it gives municipalities the authority to do the kind of programming that they choose. So the questions that you've just brought up are really good ones. And uh, it clearly would remain for this council to have uh, probably numerous discussions with, with our community and with staff about 
how we might wish to end the climate action committee, uh, obviously, um, how, how we might wish to roll such programs out. But th this motion really doesn't get down to that kind of detail, but they're really, it's a really good question to, you know, to, to spin off from, uh, to, to set um, the debate in motion. Great. Thank yeah, Anything thank else you, Mayor. I, no, I think I think that's fine. I think the Councillor Ney has answered the the question just for for my knowledge of what the intent of this was. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Zelka. Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, I'll be speaking in favor of the motion. Um, I'm very pleased uh, uh, when I. Uh, to, to see uh, uh, some of these uh, initiatives brought forward, and thank you so much, Councillor Nay, for um, for 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 uh, for doing the legwork on this. I really very much appreciate that. I have had a chance to attend a few of the uh, climate caucus meetings as well. Although uh, it sounds like other councillors are being much more attentive than I am. Uh, when I read uh, the the mandate letter uh, for the Minister of uh, Municipal Affairs, um, uh, it, it does make general reference to um, to uh, a climate action and 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 uh, and making our our um, uh, not only jobs, but protecting the air, land, water, and those sorts of things. But it also works to talk, makes direct reference to the Clean BC Climate Action Plan. Um, uh, it doesn't specifically make reference to pace, doesn't specifically make reference to, to aspects, but it does talk about a general framework. So I'm really pleased to see um, uh, that, that uh, uh, in support of this motion, we can bring something forward that will actually assist uh, the ministers, for, assist the province, and will be an active uh, partner in this approach. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, uh, in, on the Clean BC Climate Climate Action Plan. Uh, there's a website called uh, Better Homes. Where is it? Uh, BetterHomesBC.ca. That is uh, a, an integral part of the Climate Action Plan that uh, the province is promoting right now. Uh, they have doubled the rebates available to all homeowners in British Columbia. Uh, it's available until March 31st, 2021. Uh, I happen to be uh, a person who's taking advantage of that. And I certainly encourage all of my, not only counselors, but also all of my Oak Bay um, residents to, uh, to go to betterhomesbc.ca and uh, get your electricity upgraded and your furnace and your water heater, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Zalka. But go ahead, Councillor Ney. Yeah, just a comment through you, Mayor, to Councillor Zalka. Just for your information, yes, you're quite right. The mandate letter with the Ministry of Municipal Affairs is somewhat more vague, though consistent with this. But um, they're being asked to work with Ministry of Energy, Mines, and uh, Low Carbon Innovation, uh, mm. where in their uh, mandate letter it's more specific. Excellent. So, but thank, thank you. you for the observation. Thank you, Councillor Ney. Go ahead, Councillor Appleton. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And just also speaking in favor of the motion, I appreciate Councillor Ney bringing this forward. Um, as she noted in her preamble, um, it does directly support um, recommendation four from the Community Climate Action Work Group. Uh, I know that the members and the participants in that process uh, felt very strongly that an initiative of this type was something that Oak Bay should be moving forward. So uh, certainly it keys in really closely with what that group uh, communicated as being a high priority. Uh, Council will also note that in the uh, preliminary discussions before the budget process began, that, um, that Council did move to have staff bring forward information about the, implement, the potential kickoff of how we would action recommendation number four at the municipal level. So as that advances through the, uh, through the budget process, uh, definitely uh, encourage uh, Council's attention to that as well, because this will be sort of the next piece in this, in this larger puzzle. So I appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Appleton. Are there any other questions or comments at this time? Not seeing any, I will call the question then. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not opposed? I guess I have to get my pen out and start writing. Thank you, Councillor Nay, for bringing there's, this forward. You did notice there's a nice <laughs> template letter. I did, I did, yes. Thank you for that. I have to item number 6.1, the renewal of Oak Bay Lawn Bowling Club's lease. I believe we have Mr. Uh, Herman here from Parks, Rec and Culture. Welcome, Mr. Herman. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Can you hear me? We can hear you fine. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this report, I think, is quite straightforward. The... Uh, Lawn Bowling Club um, has a lease at uh, Carnarvon Park for for their buildings and, and lawn bowls areas that uh, the most recent version of which expired in uh, in Jan on January 1st of this year. 
uh, it was a 10-year term. Um, they've been at that location since the 1950s. Uh, so uh, obviously this is coming forward with a recommendation to renew for uh, another 10-year period. Uh, some of the key clauses that uh, that were included in this agreement are noted under the analysis section of the report. There was a, a fee of, of $1. Um, the club is responsible for all its utility costs, its maintenance costs, their insurance of their belongings, things like that. Uh, the district is, as uh, the owner of the buildings, is responsible for more structural issues and, and um insurance for the buildings themselves. Uh, something that ha did come up is that uh, the club has not historically been required to, pr to pay property taxes. Um, so staff have uh, had a discussion with, um, with the president of the club with the idea of bringing forward a uh, uh, permissive tax exemption request uh, this fall, later this fall. So. We'll work with the director of finance to to bring that forward. Um, otherwise, I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the options, as noted, are to approve the recommendation uh, to establish a new 10-year agreement, uh, to direct staff to make some changes that council may prefer to see. Uh, this would require, obviously, some additional discussion and negotiation with the club, or to deny the recommendation, which would um, also require some additional um, work and thought as to the use of the land. But uh, I would note that the Carnarvon Park Master Plan, which uh, Council has approved, did include uh, lawn bowling as it currently exists on the site. And uh, that's, that's a summary of the report. Very good. Thank you very oh, much. I, I'm sorry, Your Worship, but I, I should note that uh, there may be um, some uh, additional information from the Director of Corporate Services as to the, the proper wording of the recommendation. I'm not 100% sure that it's uh, as it should be. So you might just want to double check that. Uh, sure. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Herman. Uh, Ms. Williams, uh, is there a correction to the wording of the recommendation? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. The wording on the recommendation on the agenda is as Council should consider it. Uh, the important aspect of this is that really we're, we're, giving, uh, we're giving staff direction to notify the public of the intent to dispose of this, this piece of public land and bring, it, bring back a, a, uh, an agreement for Council's consideration. So I believe the, I believe the memo had asked for a, 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 an agreement to be executed. Uh, whereas we need to provide the notice to the public first and then council can consider that uh, agreement at a future date. So the recommendation on the agenda is the one you'll want to be considering. Okay, thank you for that clarification, Ms. Williams. Uh, I have uh, Councillor Zalka, you had your hand up. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, quick question through you to staff. Um, I believe within the timeline of this lease uh, we're intending in Carnarvon Park to replace uh, some of the buildings that uh, may be used by the Oak Bay Lawn Bowling Club. I just wanted to uh, confirm that uh, we won't be under an obligation to house uh, their, their club while that building is being replaced or if we are uh, what will the uh, liability or the, uh, the extent of that be please. Thank you very much Councillor Zalka. Um, Mr. Herman. Uh, thank you Your Worship. The the building that's to be replaced um, certainly most recently is is actually not the building that the not one of the buildings that the lawn bowling club is is currently utilizing. It's the the building that used to house uh, the daycare and is currently being uh, rented out for some storage and has the um, washrooms in it and and is most adjacent to the spray park. So. That's the building that is to be replaced and is actually the first um, step in the implementation uh, of the plan. So there is no change to uh, the buildings um, that the uh, that the Lombo and Club is utilizing, certainly in the short term, envisioned by the, the master plan. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Braithwaite. 
Um, I was just uh, going to be happy to, um, thanks for that question, Councillor Zelka, because that was one of my questions as well as which buildings were going to be replaced. Um, but I'm happy to move the staff recommendation. So there's a seconder. Thank you. Is there uh, any discussions, other questions? I'm not seeing any. I just, uh, Mr. Herman, one question uh, uh, to you. Do we have a sense of the lifespan of this particular building? I know there was a replacement of some windows in the last few years. Is the uh, expectation this building uh, has a significant lifespan remaining? Uh, I believe so, Your Worship. In fact, the club has just uh, done some work to uh, enhance the building and added a deck and, and things like that, which they did um, and communicated that through the district. Uh, there, there's nothing to suggest that uh, that, that building is on its last legs or, or anything like that. I, I would think it would, uh, I mean, I'm not sure I'm prepared to suggest it's good for another 20, 30 or 40 years, but um, it's certainly for the foreseeable future, it should um, serve its purpose well. Okay, anticipated that it would survive the 10 years of this of this lease agreement. Correct. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any other questions or discussions for the motion? I don't see any hands here, so I will call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed, thank you very much. Um, moving on to item 6.2, Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce membership. Um, and this is a, a recommendation that came out of the Committee of the Whole. Um, so perhaps, uh, I can't remember who made that motion at the Committee of the Whole, but perhaps you can make it again, Councillor Braithwaite. I, I think I did, uh, your, your Worship. So I'll make the, uh, the motion as per the staff recommendation. It moved here and seconded. Uh, is there any other discussion, Councillor Braithwaite, I'll, since you moved it? No. Nope. Any questions from anybody here? Oh, sorry, Councillor Patterson, did I see? Yeah, go ahead. Get to the unmute. Raise the hand. Unmute. <laughs> uh, just um, the only, um, you know, I, I do support this, but I guess the caveat that I, I would make is that um, uh, it, you know, and not get into the um, just continual rollover without a reevaluation. And I think that we did have that discussion um, when this was first considered that um, we would support it, particularly uh, it, in this time, there's a great need to support business in the community and certainly the Chamber of Commerce um, uh, has a stellar role in, in, in a lead role in doing that. But um, just so that we do bring it back to the council table to see how, how we evaluate the value to us on a, on a go forward basis. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Patterson. Uh, Ms. Williams, perhaps you can just touch on that fact. Uh, what is the mechanism? Because it was discussed at Committee of the Whole, but it doesn't form this a part of this motion. To uh, Does it just fall under the category of annual uh, pieces in the, for the next few years under our budgeting process, or what would be the expected uh, return? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. If, if council wishes to uh, review this on an annual basis, I would, I would recommend that you amend the recommendation to include that language so that uh, the second clause would say, and that this item be reviewed on an annual basis. I'm happy to, to make that amendment to the motion. Can move her in second or both agree. So I'll just treat that as, a, as an, an amendment to the original. Um, thank you for that. Um, uh, okay, uh, Councillor Zelka. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I, I appreciate uh, the amendment. I'm sorry, please. Uh, we're not talking about the amendment. We're talking about the full motion. No, I'll take. We'll do the full motion as the mover and original mover and seconder agree to this this change. Ah, so we'll just... a friendly amendment. I got it. Okay. So uh, we're getting the motion. I, I'm I'm uh, still uh, going to be speaking against the motion. Uh, I'm, uh, although I am pleased to see that it'll be reviewed every year. Um, uh, last year, our our uh, financial plan online says that we had a 6.93 percent tax increase, and today's plan is currently uh, with this. Uh, 0.17 addition to the, to the taxes would put us over 6.5% unless we add something else. Um, and for me, it just feels like uh, the tax rates are a bit too high. So this, uh, while I absolutely support business and I definitely want, uh, want to see business supported, um, and I'm very pleased with the uh, contributions we're making to the uh, uh, prosperity uh, uh, project uh, across uh, uh, Southern Vancouver Island. Um, 
uh, to me, this this feels uh, uh, something that we could possibly put off for a year or two until our tax rates are a bit lower. Thank you, Councillor Zelka. Is there any other discussion on this item? I think uh, as all things are, uh, it is subject to final budget adoption because nothing, nothing gets done until the budget is actually passed. So uh, there is always opportunity again to, re, uh, to consider this as it goes forward, but this would essentially set the direction and I wouldn't flag it for any further discussion uh, on this in this budget process. So uh, thank you, Councillor Zelka for raising that. Go ahead, Councillor Green. Yes, thank you, Mayor. And, and just to say that I will be supporting the motion. Um, I think this is really good value for for the uh, smaller cost. And frankly, um, because it will be reviewed every year, I think we can do that against, against uh, future budgets if it's approved at this budget cycle. But I think the, um, the benefits for our local economy and local small businesses and tourism far outweighs um, any negative impact. So that, that would be my position and thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Green. I don't see any other hands up for discussion. So. I'll be calling the question, uh, all those in favor, those opposed, Councillor Zalka opposed, thank you very much, that passes. Um, item number 6.3 on the agenda, animal control contract and bylaw review. Um, I believe Ms. Morden uh, is with us and uh, Steve, Mr. Meekle as well uh, to- uh, uh, Point of procedure. Item. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Zalka. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry for interrupting. Um, I understand that this is not open to public uh, input. I was wondering if staff could possibly share, uh, since I'm not becoming still becoming familiar with our new procedures bylaw. Why is this not open to public uh, input, please? Sure. Thank you. I'll uh, I'll turn to Ms. Williams for that, or perhaps I can I'll, I'll go to Ms. Williams, and you can defer to Ms. Morton if you wish, Ms. Williams. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yes, Council. When we adopted our new Council procedure bylaw. Council considered items that it was willing to take public input on and items that it uh, would not be taking public input on. This one, because it's a report that's before Council for Information only, falls into that category of not subject to public input. There you go, Councillor Zalka, any further questions? Uh, oh, thank you. We're, again, uh, point of procedure. Um, when will public be able to, um, I guess, present on this item? Sure, um, Ms. Ms. Williams. Yes, through your worship to Councillor Zelka. Uh, once the once Council has uh, started to receive the other pieces that are mentioned in this report, and that a part of that is uh, an interim amendment to the bylaw to address uh, leg hold bans, uh, the bylaw itself, and the public consultation portion, the public will be engaged during those processes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Uh, Councilor Green, your hand is still officially up right now. I just thought oh, I'd let you sorry. know in case you uh, want to lower it. Uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Morton? I'm here, Your Worship. You can hear me all right? We can hear you fine. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, did you want right. to provide a quick... Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just hadn't begun yet. <laughs> Um, so this information uh, is um, before council because as staff was preparing the 2021 corporate plan and our work plans, we identified that uh, quite a few of us were carrying different pieces of work that related to animal control, whether that was through our operational plans or special project work. Uh, so we decided perhaps we should stitch together a bit of a collaborative plan for how we were going to move forward with these various pieces and communicate that to council um, for, for your input and, um, and information. So the first piece I can refer to on page two, uh, at the very top of page two, we kind of outlined a phased approach to address all of the matters that we're looking at. Uh, the first phase, which is really underway now, is an RFP process um, to award a new three-year animal control services contract. Uh, so we, Ms. Bay has worked on the development of that RFP, and we do expect that will be out by the end of this week. Uh, and the contract is up in July 2021, so we'd be looking to award that prior to expiry of that, or to take place upon expiry of that contract. Uh, the second phase has to do with what... Uh, Ms. Williams referred to as kind of an interim piece to deal with a couple of different pieces that probably are gonna require an amendment to the existing bylaw. And then the third and final phase would be 
a broader piece, uh, Parks, Rec and Culture had had in their work plan that they would like to look at an update of the dog policies. Uh, and when we took a look at the bylaw, which dates back to 1999 and has had, I think, nearly 20 amendments over the years, we thought perhaps this is a good opportunity to take a broader approach um, and to look to modernize that bylaw. So um, moving along to timeline and process, we've outlined that for you. Uh, the first piece, which is the RFP process to award the new uh, contract is, is, as I said, underway. But pieces two, three, and four are uh, available for um, just some additional, if, if there's flexibility there, if, if council wanted to um, change perhaps the scope of what we're looking at in any of those steps, or just the approach in general. So I think that's about it. Um, I'll leave it there and happy to take questions. Uh, thank you, Ms. Morden. I believe, do we have... Uh, um... I guess Mr. Herman is available as well Mr. to talk Herman, to any of yes. the of the parks and rec portions of this. Thank you very much. Are there questions of staff? Go ahead, Councillor Zelka. Uh, thank you very much. I was very pleased to see um, uh, uh, some of this come forward. Uh, I, I'm, I'm still becoming familiar with the rest of it. I'm sure I'll be familiar with all of it very soon. The, in particular, with respect to the uh, Victoria Harbor Bird Sanctuary, um, uh, uh, item uh, point two talks about uh, some policy aspects or some things that we may need to change in our bylaws. But I understand that none of Oak Bay is in the bird sanctuary and none of the bird sanctuary is in Oak Bay since uh, sort of a, it, 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 uh, uh, could, could someone explain point two, please? Sure, I'll go to Ms. Morden. I, I think you're touching on the point that Oak Bay ends at the high water mark and the yes. sanctuary begins at the high water mark going down. So uh, hence the lack of overlap. Ms. Morden, did you wish to speak to that point? Sure, thanks, Your Worship. So it had just been um, identified by Mr. Heidley when we were going through this that there may be some um, outcomes and recommendations that Oak Bay may need to think about. And I'm not, I apologize, I don't know the exact details and specifics on that, but he has certainly highlighted that. And so we just wanted to include it on our radar for this for this particular plan and moving forward. Uh, uh, last point, if, if I may. Go ahead, Councillor Zalka. Uh, the, the, the federal conservation officers, I know have quite a, 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 quite a wide latitude to destroy any cat or dog found harassing wildlife within the bird sanctuary. So I think it's very good that we're um, at least educating our, our uh, <clears throat> our residents on the the uh, peril their their uh, pets are are subject to. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Zelka. Councillor Patterson. Yes, thank you, Mayor, and through you to staff. It does speak in the report about um, engagement the district's procurement specialist. Could you just clarify for me who the district's procurement specialist is? <laughs> Sure. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Uh, I think this really probably goes to either Ms. Morden or Ms. Williams can answer this. Ms. Morden, since you're, you're open uh, mic right now, why don't we go to you? Sure, absolutely. Thanks, Your Worship. So uh, procurement specialist uh, is working on a consulting basis through our uh, Director of Financial Services. Uh, we occasionally work with this individual to ensure that our processes are fair and transparent and that our RFP documents are, are up to snuff with the latest, the latest standards in the industry. Thank you. Go ahead. So, yes, thank you. Thank you for that information. So just for clarification then, this may, uh, th this is the procurement specialist isn't um, geared simply to an the animal control contract as, as opposed to, uh, a number of contracts that might um, need uh, a review of the contract itself then, is that correct? Um, Ms. Morden? Yes, thanks, Your Worship. Yes, that's correct. We've, okay. we've worked with this individual on, on um, and I'm not actually sure of the complete history, but in recent history, uh, there, there's been a few to my knowledge that we've worked with him on for some advice. Thank you, Mayor, that, that clarifies it. I thought it was going to be a specialist in in writing a contract for, for control of animals. Thank you. That would be a very narrow specialty indeed <laughs> to have that. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Green.
Yes, thank you. Sorry, this muting and unmuting is takes no, time. No problem. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> I, first of all, I'm very pleased to see this report. Thank you very much, Ms. Morden. Um, and it's point number two on page two that I'm particularly interested in on behalf of uh, members of the community in particular around wildlife trapping. So I'm very pleased to see that. And um, I just have a question about that and then a couple of comments around dogs and cats. Um, you are indicating that a report on key findings of the survey is expected in April, 2021. I'm just wondering what next steps would be to amend our existing bylaw to cover wildlife trapping, depending on the results of the survey, of course. But there is a feeling, I think, among some of our community members, uh, you know, a sense of urgency on, on this particular matter. So I was just wondering what the next steps would be following the, um, the survey results in April. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Green. I'll uh, go to Ms. Morden on that one. Thanks, Your Worship. Yes, so that survey actually in particular um, is a, it's a Canadian Wildlife Service survey, uh, and that has to do with the migratory bird sanctuaries. Oh, I see. Uh, so that's the piece we're waiting on. Um, but in terms of the uh, wildlife trapping, we are prepared to initiate that um, immediately. <laughs> so we do have some uh, external uh, assistance lined up to help with the research and reporting on that. So I expect that one will probably come back to the April Committee of the Whole meeting uh, with, with the report and recommendations on that particular piece. And then because that survey isn't expected out until April, uh, there may be a couple of reports that come forward if there's anything coming out of that survey that we need to pay attention to as well. And then just a quick follow-up uh, through you, Mayor, to Ms. Morden. So following uh, the return of those reports in April, it would be possible then to amend our existing bylaw if Council so wished. Ms. Morden? Yes, that would be the intent, yeah. Okay, thank you. And just a question on dogs and cats. I read over the existing uh, animal control bylaw today, and I was surprised to see that there are restrictions on the number of dogs and cats per household. And I guess my question on, on that, when it comes forward, um, I would suggest that that is almost impossible to enforce. I suspect the original intent behind it was to, present, to prevent um, residents having catteries and kennels for breeding and that kind of thing. Um, but um, I, I would suggest that removing that would be um, probably a good suggestion. Enforcement, as I say again, enforcement is almost impossible on each of those items. It, it just seems rather draconian to me, but that's me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Councillor Green. I'm going to go uh, just on your first point, Councillor Green, because um, I, I, what we're doing tonight is receiving this report, and the report doesn't explicitly talk about a separate report uh, in the interim for animal control uh, for trapping. So I'm just wondering, would it be helpful if we had um, a national motion directing staff to bring back that report, like some sort of interim amendment to the animal control bylaw related to uh, banning leg hole traps? Is that, is that something that we should have as a motion here, Ms. Morden? Thanks, Your Worship. Um, certainly you could if, that's, if, that's, uh, if you were more comfortable with that. Um, but just in the way that we had uh, developed this plan, and put it before you for information. It was certainly within the realm of what we were intending to do. Uh, and so for my own clarity, it's it's not necessary. I will I will bring that back. But if that gives council a level of comfort, um, then absolutely. Okay, that's, I, I'll leave that to council to decide if they want more clarity or not on that. I just thought I'd ask the question because I always like to be as clear as possible. So we all understand what's coming forward, uh, staff and, and council. Um, I don't see any other hands up with questions at this time or comments. So I'd look for a motion. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Green. Thank you. And I will move uh, re the receipt of the report for information. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Seconded, thank you. And any discussion on that? Not seeing any, I just wanna express my appreciation to staff for, for discovering all these different projects underway and, and coalescing them into one. So uh, yeah, some positive outcome from the work planning process already. Uh, and also appreciate the, uh, the work underway on the, on the leg trap 
piece. I, this is these are the humane leg hole trials. For anybody wondering if we're allowing the uh, the vicious closed type, that's not the case. That's governed. It's all governed by the province, but they allow for certain types. So this is consideration of the quote unquote humane type, uh, con you know, uh, allowance. So uh, with that, I will call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. Um, up next, we have item 6.4, which is an AVICC resolution on recreational wolf hunting on Vancouver Island. Uh, this is brought forward by Councillor Green. Uh, but I, before I get to that, I just want to allow uh, uh, Councillor Appleton uh, to step away for a moment. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, just to let uh, Council know that I will recuse myself from the discussion on this point. The management of hunting, uh, it takes place in the same division of the ministry where I work. So it's, um, yeah, a little bit uh, too close to my workplace and uh, I prefer to recuse myself. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Appleton, before you go, shall I just text you as soon as the, the debate is completed here? Is that fair? Very good. If you don't see anything from me in the next four or five minutes you can poke your head and see if we're done or and then leave again if we still are in case that method of reaching you fails okay thank you, thank you. all right councillor green uh this is yours you don't have to read the whereas clauses but just if you could read aloud for the record that therefore be it resolved thank you uh, therefore, be it resolved that AVICC, which is the Association of Vancouver Island Coastal Communities, and UBCM, the Union of British Columbia Municipalities, request the provincial government to implement a moratorium on recreational wolf hunting on Vancouver Island, pending the completion of a scientific, data-driven, and evidence-based study that includes consultation with the island's Indigenous communities to, re to re-examine the efficacy of unrestricted wolf harvesting practices and their impacts on the island's biodiversity, wildlife ecology, and sustainability of the resident wolf population. Thank you. Is there a seconded? Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Councillor Green, you provided some background information. Is there anything else you wish to just touch on here? Just that, um, I've first of all, I really appreciate um, the help and support I had from staff on bringing this forward and also yours, Mayor, um, in principle and, and my colleagues um, who have been encouraging. <clears throat> I brought this forward because uh, as a result of a conversation last year regarding the death of this particular wolf, Stichea, um, it did create a, a public outcry. And then when um, we learned that we were going to be the host community for the sculpture that is designed to to commemorate and memorialize this particular wolf as representative of a, of, of a species of wolf uh, unique to Vancouver Island on the West Coast, I thought it, it fit very well with the idea of bringing forward a resolution to request the government to, the provincial government to, to call a moratorium. There have been, there has, there's very little evidence of scientific study. Much of it is anecdotal. Um, there are estimates that there are between 150 and 250 of these wolves on Vancouver Island, but no one is certain as to the numbers. Um, and so there are a number of gaps in how these wolves are, are managed. Um, and the recreational hunting practices are, it, it's, virtu it's virtually open season for all but two months of the year to recreational hunt these animals. So that, that, that was the genesis of my bringing it forward. And um, thank you very much. And if there are any questions, I'm quite happy to take them. Thank you, Councillor Green. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Patterson. Thank you, Mayor. And um, thank you, Councillor Green, for bringing this forward. Um, obviously, you've uh, researched it quite extensively. And so I'm just wondering, now this is for Vancouver Island, but um, it, it was generated, I guess, because of the, um, the reduction in the, the caribou herds that were, uh, where wolves were, were primarily um, blamed as the, the predatory species that was causing such extinction, although that, as you said in your, your remarks, was not conclusive. But um, I'm wondering if your research included anything. I know there's a federal species at risk risk act that mandates that actions be taken to recover species at risk of extinction like the caribou um, and that non-action 
by the province could lead the federal government, could lead Ottawa to then, would leave the door open for Ottawa to step in to um, uh, impose regulatory framework on us. So I'm just wondering if uh, any of the research indicated whether that was for the province as a whole, what um, and what implications, if it would be a more positive implication, because there's less data available on the island for the um, uh, the impact of wolves on the habitat of the certainly of caribou. Sure, thank you, okay, Councillor Patterson. And and the motion is specific to Vancouver Island. Just want to make sure everybody's clear on that. But go ahead, Councillor Green. Well, thank you very much. Um, Councillor Patterson, for your question, I am not an expert in this field by any means. I am aware that there there is wolf wolf culling done in other parts of the province to protect the caribou, um, but this pertains only to Vancouver Island at this time, and that is because uh, we don't know what the unrestricted harvesting of these wolves is doing to tip the balance of other um, other species and biodiversity on the island generally. These wolves are also unique in that they have adapted to living along the shore and, and eating marine diets. So it, it's uncertain about how, this, how the impacts of unrestricted harvesting might be affecting other aspects of our biodiversity strictly on the island. Um, this is not a request for any other part of the province. There are different issues and problems in, um, in other parts of the province, I realize that. As well, uh, we, I believe we don't have caribou on Vancouver Island, so I think we're safe on that issue. But um, I do appreciate your question, um, and that would require further investigation on the part of the province, I would imagine. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Green. I, um, I also I appreciate actually in rereading it here as, as you were talking, you do even specifically talked about recreational wolf hunting as opposed to a more pro provincial cull type models of, yeah. of, of pieces as well. Right. So. Um, any other questions on this or discussions? All right, they have a motion on the table. I'll call the question then. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed? That'll go to AVICC for debate. And if it passes there, it'll go on to uh, UBCM and the province. So thank you very much for putting that together, Councillor Green. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, up next, we have item 7.1. Uh, this is the Crescent Road Temporary Sidewalk. And um, this area is, this item is subject to public input uh, as we're looking at making public changes uh, and making a decision here. So if anybody from the public wishes to call in, uh, there is a phone number. I see nobody's on the Zoom call. So it would be just, uh, you could come on the Zoom call if you're watching the streaming at home and raise your hand here, or you can just call into the phone number that is gonna be put up on the screen. Uh, there we go. Thank you very much. And uh, that's the process. You would come in and just hit star nine to raise your hand and I will go to our staff to uh, just to invite the public to speak in a few minutes once we get through the council questions uh, portion of this. So to start with, we're going to go to Mr. Haran uh, to do a quick overview of this uh, agenda item. Welcome, Mr. Haran, our Director of Engineering. Mr. Haran, are you there? I'm sorry, Your Worship. This is uh, Steve Rennick, the Manager oh. of Engineering Services, and Thank I you. will be speaking to this matter. Okay, my uh, apologies. I did. I saw. I thought I saw Mr. Haran's name on the screen, so I called him. I, I was also aware that you were. You could have been here. So welcome, Mr. Rennick. Yes, and uh, I apologize for the interruption. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak on this matter. I uh, just want to give a brief overview of the report and the recommendation. We have had a member of the public along the section of Crescent Road between uh, Falde Road and the intersection with King George Terrace, who has requested that we make changes to the sidewalk in that area to allow better physical distancing. Uh, we had done so operationally through the EOC level last year with a temporary installation, basically of movable cones. And some of those cones were removed. Uh, it wasn't a great long-term option. And so we opted that we would do the bollards similar to what's been done on Oak Bay Avenue, which would have come at a loss of parking on the south side of the road. 
We notified residents in the area that this would be coming and we actually received quite a good deal of opposition, uh, mainly around the loss of parking, but also that there are other issues on this particular section of road that would not necessarily be fixed through the sidewalk widening. And so because there's computing priorities here, we felt that the best way to handle this particular issue would be to bring the matter to council. Uh, and I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Rennick. And uh, I'm happy to go to uh, any member of council that might have questions. I have Councillor Braithwaite, then Councillor Zilka. Um, thank you, Mayor. And um, through you to Mr. Rennick. Mr. Rennick, if this were to move forward um, and we found that it perhaps wasn't working the way we wanted it to work, there's nothing to stop us from taking it down um, with the, ha having council make a, 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 an amendment to, to take this down. Um, and if that wasn't to happen, then I think I read in the report that it would actually come down as of December 31st. Um, 2021, um, no matter what. Is that correct? Mr. Rennick? Uh, through you, Mayor, to Council. It could be rescinded by Council at any time. It is also set to expire at the end of this year. However, it is subject to the caveat that the EOC could choose to extend it in the event that the state of emergency was to continue past the end of the year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor Braithwaite. I have Councillor Zelka, then Appleton. Uh, thank you so very much, Chair. And um, uh, thank you, um, uh, staff, for uh, reminding me that we're still in a state of emergency. I understand when I look on online that uh, at this moment it's been extended to March 2nd, but it most likely will be extended even further since the pandemic is continuing. Um, and I presume it's under those extraordinary powers that the EOC was able to effectively order this, order Public Works to do this uh, initial work. Uh, that was a, that was a question to staff and Mr. Rennick, who was not here at the time, but <laughs> you can answer the question. Uh, through you to Council, Your Worship. Yes, the original sidewalk widening that was undertaken on Oak Bay Avenue and in a couple of other parts of town that was directed by the EOC through the uh, emergency powers. Fantastic. Um, so then the question then, I, I, I do understand that some parking will be um, uh, uh, supplanted uh, 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 by these uh, more, more permanent uh, cones. Uh, is it possible that uh, since Quimper Park, Chinese Cemetery, uh, Harling Point is rather popular, especially during good weather, is there any um, uh, additional parking we could uh, uh, provide uh, for those uh, uh, wanting to go to that area um, or possibly to some of the other areas in Gonzales Bay? Um, if staff could uh, possibly uh, consider identifying some, some replacement parking, that would be great. Uh, sure, Mr. Rennick, do we have any no parking uh, or resident only parking in that area available for change? Uh, through you, Mayor to Council, I don't have that information at my fingertips. And if Council would like to see larger modifications to the parking regime in that area, uh, I would be happy to bring something forward, but it would have to be at a later meeting. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Zelke, you still have the floor. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, um, uh, it, I'd be interested um, in, in hearing what might be possible. Uh, just uh, uh, at least until this temporary measure is 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 withdrawn uh, to see if maybe a temporary uh, a parking could be uh, provided. Uh, as I say, that's a very popular part of, uh, of Oak Bay and um, uh, uh, to make, but it's also very hard to get to. So I'd be very, uh, uh, I find it, I'd be very curious to see what might be available, and if it takes a bit more time, is that going to be a problem? Okay, thank you, Councillor Zalka. Uh, there wasn't a question to staff. I'm assuming that was um, just an observation. It's an observation. Okay, uh, Councillor Appleton. Well, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I was just wondering whether staff could, I, I, I remember the temporary installation that was put in place. Uh, and I recall council having discussions early in the EOC activation about the benefits of increasing sidewalk space for distancing and uh, some of the challenges around where those might be located. I guess I'm just curious about the, um, the, the scheme or the approach used 
to prioritize one area over another. Uh, I, I think that it's completely reasonable to uh, increase the sidewalk width in this particular location. There's also other locations that, that I think could benefit as much potentially or, or more, that's just my one opinion. Uh, so I'm just kind of wondering, this is sort of a one piece that I think is, in my opinion, is supportable, but sort of sits on its own. So I'm wondering, is there a larger um, strategy for want of a better word for prioritizing um, how these, these types of uh, interventions are gonna be, are gonna be implemented? Sure, thank you, Councilor Appleton. Uh, Mr. Rennick. Uh, thank you, Mayor, through you to Council. The locations that were chosen earlier last year, unfortunately, were before my term of employment, and I'm not able to speak to those why those particular ones might have been chosen. This location, however, I can speak to. It's a very narrow road. It's a very busy location, uh, and there's a lot of competing priorities on this part of the road. It's well used by recreational cyclists by BC Transit. Uh, there's a lot of cars that park there of people who are accessing uh, Quimper Point or Gonzales Beach. Uh, and so it's, I, I will acknowledge there may be other areas in the district that could also receive this type of widening, but I think that this is one that um, absolutely could use it. Thank you, Mr. Rennick. Uh, Councillor Appleton, anything else in follow-up? No, oh, thank you, Your Worship. I, I would just make that notation to, I, I guess, some of this is a bit of a moving target because we're not sure how long we're going to be in an emergency operations situation. I guess I would just make the point to council as a whole, uh, as in, in further to our recent discussion on uh, traffic safety and road safety improvements. Uh, you know, our ability, our, our our ability and our uh, implementation of these temporary improvements over the last year has really shown us kind of what's possible. So I guess I would encourage council to uh, uh, look for opportunities to do this type of thing in the future. Thank you, Councillor Appleton. I have uh, Councillor Green and then Braithwaite. Yes, thank you. And thank you, Mr. Rennick and, and through you, Mayor, to Mr. Rennick. Mr. Rennick, um, what is the level of pedestrian traffic along this particular stretch? Do we know that? Have we monitored uh, how much pedestrian traffic is, is appearing there uh, on a daily basis? And I'm just wondering, is most of the parking residents only? And I, I don't mean that it's restricted, but I mean the majority of the parking along that area, is it by residents or is it by visitors? Do we know uh, how much for each of those groups? Uh, those are just a couple of questions I wondered if you would be able to address. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Green. Uh, Mr. Rennick? Uh, through you, Mayor, to Council, that those are excellent questions, and we do not have that information. We haven't been able to conduct pedestrian counts, and in terms of doing uh, any sort of parking survey on whether those vehicles are from residences in the area or not, uh, we haven't been able to do that but uh, we could do so if uh, so directed. Um, and Mayor, just to follow up, and thank you, Mr. Rennick, I appreciate that. Um, my concern is that we might be squeezing too much into one site, that we could create an even greater choke point at this particular, on, along this particular stretch. As Mr. Rennick pointed out, it is subject to um, bus traffic, cycling, walking, and parking. And I'm just wondering by restricting it further if we're going to cause problems for some of the other uh, other modes of transportation and just you know just a point thank you uh, thank you councillor green councillor braithwaite um thank you mayor um i i, I understand where councillor green is coming from um however i think that for me um i would assume that staff wouldn't put up something forward had they not thought of all of those things already. Um, so I, I'm going along the lines of um, perhaps what Councillor Appleton was saying as well is that, you know, maybe we should be looking at the other areas that we should be doing this in as well. Um, so I'm actually, I look at this and I go, I think this is a good idea. I walk down there often. Um, it is a very choked up area. Um, I would, um, be, I'm very supportive of this, so I'm quite willing right now to put um, this uh, to make a motion of the staff recommendation. Um, you can do that. Okay, so moved. Is there a seconder of the staff recommendation? Second. Moved and seconded. 
Uh, anything else you want to add, Councillor Braithwaite? No, I think I'm good. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Green, you have your hand up still. Did you wish to uh, to speak? No, I'm taking that as a no. <laughs> no, well, I'll, I'll just add that I'm, I'm not sure I can support the motion as it is now, only because there is key data missing for me. And uh, that that would be the reason I wouldn't support the motion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Green. Anybody else to speak to this, uh, to the motion? Go ahead, Councillor Zelka, then Councillor Ney. Um, I would, uh, because I, I also agree there's key data missing, I'd like to know if uh, what um, uh, replacement parking would be available for those spots that are being removed, since it is a very popular area and a choke point uh, for traffic going in both directions. Um, uh, um, uh, so I would uh, consider uh, tabling this uh, uh, until we have a chance or, or give me staff a, a chance to bring some, some, um, uh, uh, some data back on, on what might be possible to augment this. Uh, you have that option as a motion, Councillor Zelke. If you I wish to just move a motion. Oh, so we, go ahead. Just, but just for clarification, such a motion would be to refer it back to staff with specific ask to bring back to council. So that Thank would be there. I, not, I not appreciate a your wordsmithing. Much, much. Uh, your, your wording is much better than mine. Yes, to refer it back to staff, uh, and and of course bring it back to a, 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 a subsequent meeting. Can I just uh, ask if you're going to refer it back to staff that you you be as specific as you can about what information? you would like them to bring back uh, to this body? Uh, as I indicated, uh, the specific information that I'd be looking for is um, uh, the uh, a replacement or augmented parking uh, that would be available uh, for the spots that are being removed. Okay. Is there a seconder for the motion to refer? Uh, I, I see a hand. Councillor, is that a yes or no? Well, I, I would like to add to what Councillor Zelka said before I... Yes, and, and I'm if, certain. If I may. Friendly amendments. But, but so I, what, I'd like to also understand the, 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 the level of pedestrian traffic that uses uh, the walkway there to understand how pressing this is for um, what the need is for, for, for the walking uh, pathway. So the, the, this is the pros and cons of making motions. We have a motion to refer it for additional information. Um, I needed someone to second it and then we can, uh, if you want to second it, uh, Councillor Ney, and oh. then you can uh, ask that we, we amend it to include that other information. It would be the appropriate process here just so that we're clear about what we're actually asking. So we have currently a motion to refer this uh, back to staff to get additional information. Uh, right now, that includes uh, information on potential replacement parking for what's being removed. And you wish to add the uh, the and you second the, the motion, so you can maybe do this as a as a friendly addition um, okay. to to add something if if council result well, is amenable. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, so I would just add that uh, we also ask staff for information about the. Uh, the, the, the the level of um, the amount of pedestrian traffic that uh, makes use of this pathway area. Seems reasonable. Yes. Is that, you're amenable to that, Councillor Zelka. So the motion is to refer for information on augmented uh, replacement parking and levels of pedestrian traffic. Okay. That's the motion on the floor right now. Uh, Councillor Patterson, you wish to speak to the referral motion? Uh, yes, Mayor. I I can't support the referral motion. I, I would be in support of the original motion. And the reason that I don't support the referral is that um, we, you know, our, I think our district staff are, are um, uh, acting with total concern and appropriately given the circumstances to um, deal with some difficult situations that we have uh, with transportation around the district. I also do, um, I, I walk around the district a lot. And so I think that if you do that, you realize that there are, there are points um, that, are, that are much more difficult. Um, you know, vehicles, vehicles are at greater liberty to park in different spots or to move. But when you're walking on very narrow sidewalks and you're trying to maintain distance, uh, it's almost impossible. And going out into the road to avoid you know, you can't cross to the other side to a sidewalk. You don't have that option. And you, you don't have the option uh, really of going out into the road because there is so much um, either cycling or buses or, or cars in the area. It, it's just a very dangerous spot for pedestrians to maneuver. And, you know, I, I appreciate that our district staff are, 
are working um, very industriously to, to make this community work for all of us during these, these trying times of Councilor pandemic. Patterson, uh, yes. just uh, Councilor Zelka, are you having a hard time hearing Councilor Patterson? I can hear her fine. Mm -hmm. Can you can you can you just speak a little louder than Councilor Patterson just to ensure he and, can hear? And and so I you know I think, but it, in order to try and do a pedestrian traffic survey and bring all the data back to council, I I think um, creates workload that while it may answer the questions, it may be so time consuming that we've lost the benefit of the opportunity. Uh, for, you know, a safer um, pedestrian zone that the staff are trying to create. So that's, you know, I, I just, in referring this back, I, I, I don't, I would hesitate to, to have the, the burden of extra time lost in providing safety for pedestrians in, in the district. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Patterson. I, I think it's appropriate for me to go to Mr. Haran uh, or Mr. Payne, whoever, but probably to Mr. Haran, just what the implications of of reviewing uh, replacement parking and uh, pedestrian traffic uh, review would entail, just in terms of timelines and staff time. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Can you hear me okay? We can, thank you. Okay, perfect. I was trying to speak earlier and I was just having finger problems and couldn't get through. So uh, thank you for... Uh, um, for asking uh, for the question here about, I think for this initiative, really, uh, uh, if uh, we, we've been working on this one for quite some time, uh, and if we had not been um, so uh, busy in 2020, this would already be done. Um, and I really think that uh, this is one of those cases where it's still meant to be, the recommendation that's in front of you tonight is still meant to be in the spirit of uh, taking action quickly uh, to get a positive benefit uh, without um, having a perfect solution, a perfect answer. So if we were going to be doing a permanent change uh, to a situation in a certain uh, street, then we would do the time consuming and labor intensive work such as pedestrian counts because pedestrian counts involves having a person standing on the street uh, for a period of time when it's busy and when it's not busy and physically counting how many pedestrians walk by and how many don't. So we already know anecdotally that in starting, um, let's call it April uh, through to October, uh, at least on the weekends and on many days, it is quite busy down there. We, we don't need to do more to gather more information. We already know um, that parking is, is uh, at a premium. So, uh, and, and for, for both for locals, because we've gotten the feedback saying they don't want to be moved anywhere else and for all the visitors that take up the rest of the space. So it is staff's recommendation that um, the report as it is in front of you is that uh, we're asking for a decision based on the information that we currently have. Um, and that if there is, if it's the council's desire to have more information, uh, then perhaps that be taken as a signal that we're not ready to, uh, uh, to make this change at this time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wren. I think that's helpful. Uh, Councillor Nay, I still have you as having the floor. Is anything else? Uh, you're muted. I, that, that's how, thank you for asking the question of staff. That's helpful, Mr. Haram, for my thinking. You just helped me um, focus in on the issue. I, I, three Mayor, can I ask staff, um, I, is, could, could, I mean, I, if the issue is about um, resident, the way, the place I see we're going to get, you know, uh, log jammed is that residents who use those spaces along the road may no longer be able to do that for the extra cars they have. So, but I, I don't know the situation specifically, but if it were the case that only residents could park along the remaining parking spaces so that it would defer, deter visitors who are frequenting the beaches and, and the hiking and whatnot in that area, could, could that mitigate the conflict uh, between the, the implementation of this uh, sidewalk widening and the need for parking, Mr. Horan. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Ney. Uh, Mr. Horan, I think it, in, if I understood that, Councillor Ney, if there was just locals, then there'd be bigger gaps between the cars and more room for people to step off the sidewalk uh, along that stretch. Is that your thinking? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mr. Horan? I. Uh, <clears throat> yes, Your Worship. Uh, I, I don't think we've quite considered it from that angle. Um, I think we were just looking at trying to provide 
enough space uh, to make the sidewalk uh, wide enough that there would not be uh, any impact in terms of parking. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Renning has a better way to answer this question, but uh, um, we had not considered it in terms of which kinds of parking and which kinds of users would be um, uh, looking to use that space. Okay, thank you, Mr. Horan. And I apologize, Mr. Renick. I went to Mr. Horan there, but really, this is <laughs> this is you're here to answer the question, so I'll go back to you. Anything else you wish to add? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Council, there are already significant gaps in the widened sidewalk required to accommodate access in and out of driveways and to accommodate the bus stop. And I fear that if we were to allow resident parking, uh, we would basically it would almost defeat the purpose of doing it, is, is my concern. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I have Councillor, anything else, Councillor Nay? Uh, well, yeah, one qu more question to staff. Could staff just ask this very specifically? Do, does staff, I, I think I know the answer, but if you could just say it clearly, it's, is, is it currently as the situation exists, a dangerous for pedestrians, not because of the COVID distancing issue, but when they when they move out onto the street, it, is it staff um, belief that this is a danger to pedestrians as the situation currently exists? Mr. Rennick? Uh, through you, Mayor, to Council, I would say that it is not an imminent safety risk, no. Uh, however, it is uh, maybe not to pedestrian preference to have to stand and wait between two parked cars uh, or to have to look over their shoulder and potentially dart into the road. Uh, so I don't think it's an imminent safety risk, no, but I do think that it's a situation that could be improved. Thank you, Mr. Rennick. Uh, Councillor Appleton. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And speaking to the motion that's on the floor, I'm not in support of referring this back to staff. Uh, I concur with others that I think the information that we have in front of us is adequate. Um, I think that it gives us an opportunity to reflect on streets as public space. Streets are, in fact, public space, uh, and that their you know their absolute use is not always for parking. Uh, if we have the uh, knowledge that we can make a safety and convenience uh, improvement for pedestrians um, and have the ability to use public space to do that. I think that we should take it. Um, when we speak about uh, analyzing the capacity or the need for pedestrians, um, I guess I see it uh, the complete, uh, the, in the complete other way around in the sense that if you make the environment more desirable for pedestrians and make it more safe and comfortable for pedestrians, you will have more pedestrians and you will encourage people to take modes other than a car to where they're going. So in fact, by providing this infrastructure, we can encourage people to uh, use active modes of transportation to get where they need to go. So I'm, I'm in support of the original motion on the table and, and not in, the, uh, in support of the motion to refer back to staff. Thank you, Councillor Appleton. Uh, Councillor Zelka. Oh, uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, of course, speaking in, in support of the motion, um, I, I would hope um, that uh, the information, uh, assuming this motion passes, uh, would be fairly easy to, to, to obtain. I would not want uh, a staff to go out of their way to, um, to spend a lot of time trying to provide the information. But I think since the staff has done a little bit of uh, community engagement already in that area, uh, the report mentions uh, that, they that they sent they mailed something to all the residents along the block and they received 10 emails. It sounds like they were all opposed uh, to, the, uh, to the initiative. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm of the impression that this initiative is half in place already. Uh, although if staff could, could at least uh, uh, share um, once I'm finished talking, um, uh, uh, is any of this already in place since they already have the, um, the authority to, to proceed? And number one, that if, if none of it's in place, then uh, uh, it sounds like uh, we're back at square one. Um, uh, I am in favor, of course, of moving forward on this, but I just uh, would, would like uh, uh, the residents to at least feel that we've heard, we've heard them. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Councillor Zalka. Did, do you have a specific question for for staff on that? Yes, I haven't been by this uh, this uh, this block in the last uh, little while. Is uh, it sounds like uh, as of last August, uh, this was already in place with plastic bollards. Is any of this uh, already in place still, or has uh, has it been completely supplanted by uh, the the local residents is moving those bollards out of the place? Uh, thank you, Councillor Zalka. Mr. Rennick. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Through you to Council. The there is nothing in place right now. The bollards were, or the cones rather were removed. And if I may, just to make a quick point, uh, I understood from Councillor Zelka that the intention is not to have it be a large burden on staff. I will say that the next council meeting, March 8th, it is unlikely that we would be able to bring back the results of the referral by March 8th which would mean that it would not be until March 22nd, uh, most likely that council would be hearing this again. So uh, to the points that have been raised about uh, operational flexibility, I think that's something that uh, should be considered. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rennick. Anything else? So we, we have a motion to refer. Um, uh, I'm gonna, Call this question prior to the public input because if it's referred, it'll come back. And we'll have that opportunity again. Uh, if it's not referred, then it, we can deal with it. And I'll, I'll invite public input on the mo on the main motion. Um, but as I'm not going to support the motion to refer, I, I always think if people are voting against. It's worth saying a couple of words uh, why. Um, I, I appreciate the intention of it, but I just hearing the the staff. Uh, time requirements. Uh, I don't think it's necessary for this piece. I would be uh, interested in, in maybe seeing and hearing more from the residents, but I don't think these pieces uh, are the key pieces for me to understand before making a, a consideration of the of the main motion. So um, I do certainly appreciate the spirit in which it was made, however, because I think we always appreciate having the, the most amount of information possible uh, when we're trying to make these kind of decisions temporary or not. Um, so the motion on the table on the floor right now is to refer this back to staff for more information on pedestrian numbers and and uh, possible alternate or additional parking spaces. Uh, that's paraphrasing, but I'm trying to get to the, the, the spirit. So uh, with that, it's, I'm gonna, any other questions or comments from council? Not seeing any. Okay, so uh, all of those in favor of the referral motion? Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to, oh. sorry, I couldn't push my button. Oh, nope, I just fair enough, absolutely. Comment? Sorry, I, I am going to speak in favor of this uh, motion as it stands, but I, I do want to say Councillor Appleton makes a very good point, and I understand that dynamic between at a certain point, you know, you 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 build it and the, the pedestrians will come, and I, I think that makes a great deal of sense, but I, I, my, my reason for doing the referrals, I think we've made it very clear to staff, we're, we're not looking for a big, huge report, just a little bit more sort of thinking this through in consultation and then get it back here and then we make a decision. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ney. So, oh, sorry, I won't be as fast because I appreciate it. Sometimes it takes a moment to, to get the hand raised. Uh, any other discussion on the referral motion to refer it back to staff? Seeing none, I will call the question. All of those in favor of referring it to staff? I have Councillor Green, Councillor Ney, and Councillor Zelka, and those opposed? Councillor Patterson, Braithwaite, and Appleton, and I too am opposed. So uh, the motion to refer fails. Uh, however, that split indicates that there's probably some questions on this still remaining. Um, as this is subject to public input, I think we've had a pretty good discussion here. We're back on the main motion of whether to um, uh, apply this. So I'm just going to again ask uh, if anybody from the public wishes to speak to this item, this is the opportunity to do so. And so I'd encourage you to call the number and uh, raise your hand and we will bring you into that conversation. Um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Williams, is anybody at this point called into the, to the number? I know your worship, we've had no callers. Okay, can we leave the phone number up on that screen? Um, because I will allow anybody who wishes to, is watching and wishes to call to do so. Just, uh, I think the most amount of time possible, we can give people the opportunity. Uh, that's, that's best practices here. Um, I don't anticipate a flood of calls, but it's always nice to someone wishes to speak to us to provide that opportunity. So uh, we're back on the main motion and I have, um, I had actually completed that original um, speaking list before I went to the uh, amendment or the referral motion. So I'm back to the main motion, but I see Councillor Ney with your hand up. So, Mr. Mayor, I just wondering, um, 
because I, I don't have a sense of what the concern is from the public. And in my, um, in, in, uh, I, on my agenda item here, I have one letter from the public. And I, I don't know if there were others that came in our mailboxes, but uh, I'm just wondering, I, I just don't have a good feel of what the complaints are right now. So I'm just wondering, Mr. Mayor, is, is there... Is, is, is there any way we can get the letters? I understood there were 10 letters that came from the residents. Um, I believe if we wanted to do that, I'll, I'll go to uh, uh, probably Ms. Williams, just from a procedural perspective. Uh, the cleanest way I can think of doing that, although it would defer the discussion here, would be to refer this back to staff to include, uh, to bring it back with those letters included um, at, at that time. But uh, Ms. Williams, is there a, a better way of going about that? Uh, no, Your Worship, that is the cleanest way for you to receive the actual correspondence. You could have the staff member uh, summarize the comments, and I may have just put him on the on the spot. He may not have that summary in front of him. Well, let's see, Mr. Rennick, do you have a, a, a that a summary available to to council for for consideration? I see we had somebody call in, so that might be a, a caller wishing to speak to the item. But for now, we'll just go to staff, Mr. Mr. Rennick. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, through you to Council. Uh, we had a wide range of comments. I did try to summarize them in the report. Uh, there were a couple of people who said that it's more of a burden on drivers and cyclists who will have to deal with a narrow lane all the time. Uh, I had a couple of folks say that people speed on this section and we're not doing anything about the speeding. Uh, we had a couple of folks say, why don't you ask people to trim their hedges? Uh, there was, it was really a, quite a broad spectrum, I would say. But, but not many that were speaking in favor of, of making the, removing the parking as a solution. Uh, that is correct. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Ney. Well, that's helpful. Thank you. I mean, yeah, that, that's all. Oh, sorry, is my hand still up? Sorry. It's okay. No, no, it's fine. Yeah, that's uh, it's all. Just... That was my question, and that's been answered. Thank you. I... Okay. Uh, Council, I don't see any other hands up. I do see a hand up from what looks to be a member of the public. Ms. Williams, is that uh, who we have on the phone? Uh, Your Worship, I do see a phone number ending in 991 that has showed up uh, in the meeting, but their hand is not up. So if the caller with the I, last, I see a, I see a hand up uh, in the in the Zoom meeting showing. So I think it may have raised. So uh, if the yeah person with the last number uh, six nine nine one, if you hit star six to unmute, we should be able to hear you speak. Oh, there he is. Again, the person calling with the last numbers uh, six nine nine one. If you wish to uh, hit star six to unmute, you should be, actually, it looks like you're unmuted now. You should be able to speak. If Hello. Speak Hello, there we go. Hi. Hi, can you just um, say your name and municipality of residence for our record? Certainly, it's Susan Sharp, and I am a resident on uh, 2009 Crescent, in the municipality of Oak Bay. Okay. Welcome. So, thank you. So, I just wanted to make a comment on um, this issue. I had corresponded with Daniel Horan since May of 2020. Um, I walk along that stretch of Crescent Road almost daily, and I see many other people that also walk along that stretch of Crescent Road. And um, it's a very awkward situation. Um, I can talk to the cars that are parked there in the summer months and also currently parked there. Um, there seem to be uh, consistently about three residential cars um, of of people who live on that set of present that park on the south side of the street and probably three residential cars on the north side of the street. Um, there's no parking restrictions on either side of the street. 
Um, but in particular, where those cars do park narrows that sidewalk down um, quite significantly. I sent an email today. Uh, my husband and I uh, went out there and actually did a little tape measure of the sidewalk. And the sidewalk um, at the pinch points um, goes down to 0.9 of a meter uh, between um, the residential side of the sidewalk and the roadside. And so if a car is parked at the curb, it creates quite a, a narrow passage. And there is no other choice for a pedestrian other than to walk in between the parked cars or if you want to continue on your walk to go onto the road. And it is quite threatening it, uh, to be on the road. Um, you know, you are looking over your shoulder. There could be a bus going by. There um, isn't a lot of attention paid to a 30-kilometer speed. I wouldn't say people were, you know, driving like, maniacal on that stretch, but they they probably um, going 40 or 50 kilometers an hour rather than the 30. Um, and there are all kinds of people on there, walking dogs. It's the exit from Harling Point to walk your children to Margaret Jenkins School. So in the morning hours, there's people um, driving their kids to school. There's people driving to work. There's children walking with their families to school. Um, the people walking their dogs, people just on a morning stroll. And because of the pandemic, I've noticed a real increase in foot traffic along that stretch of the road. So um, I, I really wish council give it um, consideration. Um, it's not a frivolous request. Oh, thank you, Ms. Sharp. And uh... I don't think I think the time we're spending on it already shows that we're not treating it as a frivolous request. Uh, is there anything else you wish to add before we let you go? Um, no, I, I just wanted to express that uh, that um, it's been a concern for some months, and uh, Daniel Horan did try and um, put cones out in an attempt to make a temporary pathway. It was greatly appreciated by the pedestrian traffic along there and I think the residents which maybe have um, indicated their displeasure at losing their parking perhaps moved the cones and um, so then that uh, extra space for physically distancing from other pedestrians was was lost and as I I mentioned earlier um, you know it is extremely narrow at certain places um, and parking cars at those pinch points just aggravates the uh, problem. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Right, thank you, Ms. Sharp. Okay, and- uh, Yeah, thank you for listening to me. <laughs> Our pleasure. Uh, I don't see any other uh, participants have joined the meeting. Ms. Williams, uh, do you have anybody else in queue? I uh, know your worship. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that. So um, I have uh, uh, Councillor Braithwaite next on the speaking order. Thank you so much, um, Mayor. Um, I'd like to thank the caller for calling in. Um, it's interesting to hear her talk about speed being an issue on that road, because um, I have noticed that as well. Um, I would imagine when I look around the municipality and I see the places where we've actually implemented a similar um, uh, widening of a sidewalk, that it's actually acted as a bit of a traffic calming. And so I think that that would really help on this street, and it would act as a bit of a traffic calming so that um, uh, the pedestrians would feel a little bit safer. So I am going to vote for this moving forward. Um, I do appreciate the comments from my fellow um, councillors in that um, getting more information, but my fear is that if we wait too long to get more information, then we lose too much time um, to be able to make it safe for pedestrians on this, on this street. So I will be voting in favour of the motion. Uh, thank you, Councillor Braithwaite, and uh, and don't, don't see any other hands up on this. So the motion that's on the table in front of us right now is to uh, is to implement the proposed temporary widening. Is there any other discussion? I'll throw my two cents in here. I don't have strong feelings on this one. I see the pros and cons of it. I uh, 
I, I do have a bit of a problem with t tackling one particular sidewalk. Uh, we've, we've, there's, uh, I've been down there many times and there's multiple places like this, actually just about 50 yards from my house, there's a, a, a bend on the road where there's a similar hedge and, and no place to turn and, and people are forced onto the road constantly. There's more up each drive, there's places along Hampshire near the village, there's a, quite a few number of places. And, and if I'm looking at this from a, so I can certainly see this making sense. I also see it hard, having a hard time with a one-off in one location when it's it's equivalent to so many others. I also struggle a little bit with it as a COVID-19 response. I appreciate it's temporary, but um, our public health orders currently don't um, require this or have any specifics on this. And, and where we've had places where there's handrails and very narrow spaces, we put up signs uh, like on trails and things to just to let people know that it's narrow and people can, you know, might want to wear masks if there's other people on the, on the trail. Um, that being said, it's hard to argue that it wouldn't have, um, make it a nicer place to walk at the same time. So, uh, you know, from a pure uh, supporting the, the pedestrians and the people who live at Harling Point to have a pedestrian path out, it would be more pleasant. Absolutely. Um, um, I just, I have, I struggle with this coming to council and us making an, a one-off decision uh, when it seems out of sync with what we're doing in every other stretch. And I, another one that came to my mind immediately was the stretch of Fowl Bay Road between Oak Bay Avenue and, and, uh, and Fort Street, where it's incredibly narrow and busy on, on and traffic flying by, and there's no place to go at all in many of that stretches. So it's certainly not unique and not even that the highest uh, volume. So I'm, I, I, I struggle with this one, I'll be honest, but I thought I'd lay out my, my pros and cons list. If that helps anybody else make a decision, uh, so be it. Uh, Councillor Green? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I just want to add my voice to those that uh, and again, like Councillor Braithwaite, I really appreciate all the other comments. I, I don't think this is about cars versus pedestrians. I actually think this is about lack of space and lack of adequate parking and um, need for traffic calming. And, and my concern is that I don't have enough information on peak times for pedestrians, on, on movement patterns and so on. Um, you know, maybe a greater analysis because as you point out, it is a one-off. But I do appreciate the efforts of staff and it, I, I don't think my request or the request of others was to um, make busy work and, and create more time to make decisions. I think it was you know, a genuine request to understand the situation along that stretch from all points of view. I'm sorry that there is not, doesn't appear to be a buy-in from homeowners who have to park vehicles and there are very few options for alternate parking in that area as well. I, I know the area quite well as, as others do. So those are my, my sort of pros and cons. I totally support the idea of safety for pedestrians. That is not the issue for me at this point. It's just that I don't feel I have a, a broad understanding of the area um, with some of that data. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Green. We have a motion on the table and uh, just looking around to see if there's any other comments before I call the question. I am not seeing any other hands, so I will call the question. All of those in favor of the staff recommendation and those opposed. Councillor Nay, Councillor Green. Um, okay, thank you. So that motion passes. So with that, uh, go ahead. That provides the uh, allowance for staff to put in the temporary measures there. Um, if I might just ask a um, uh, an ask of staff to maybe bring back to parks is just there are a number of very tall hedges there that do tend to encroach onto the sidewalk, particularly at this time of year where things are growing quickly. Um, in their winter state, they often uh, encroach a little bit in the spring until they get cut back. So perhaps we could just make a request along there of keeping those um, those hedges turn trim back a little bit more, although not directly our responsibility if they're on private property. Um, so all we have next is uh, is new business, and uh, I believe there's a notice of motion from Councillor Patterson that she wishes to make, and this will be coming forward to a, a future committee or council meeting. Yes, uh, thank you, thank you, Mayor, and I I am very grateful for your indulgence on this, and also grateful to our Director of Finances, Mr. Payne, for um, his sage advice in 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 maneuvering this. So. Um, I do would like to bring a, a notice of motion relative to the draft 2021 to 2025 um, financial plan 
that, of course, um, we had our last meeting on last Thursday. And um, so just a, a review of this is, it, it's, it was evident in the, in the meeting and certainly in discussions I've had with residents that um, we don't necessarily have a meeting of the minds on all of the information uh, because it's, it's, it's subject to interpretation in, in what your basic knowledge is. So basically my, my notice of motion will be, where's the draft 2021 to 2025 financial plan sets out policies, practices, and tools to enable council's decision-making on services levels, infrastructure risk, and funding. And whereas the asset man management strategy referenced in the draft financial plan defines risk and recommendations to ensure sustainability of district services and to supplement long-term planning. Be it therefore resolved that council direct staff to augment information in the draft 2021 to 2025 financial plan to harmonize terminology and correlate capital funding proposed in the draft financial plan proportionately to the recommended scope of work contained in the asset management strategy and to provide greater transparency on the intended results. Um, and just a quick sentence on, on that, and I will speak to it more when it comes before, before council. You, you know, you, you, you see millions of dollars in the financial plan. And so it gives the impression that uh, the funding in, that is presented in this five-year plan uh, will perhaps, um, to some of those listening, uh, give an impression that it is going to, in fact, correct more of the situations than um, it, it really will do. So I think it's, it's very important for us on a, on a go-forward basis to have clarity of, of intent, um, what the plan is, what it will fund, and how the asset management strategy works with that. So um, with that, that, that is my notice of motion. Thank you. And I believe it will be coming forward then on March 8th, so. That's, that would be the anticipated date, yeah. So, um, and thank you for that. I think anytime we can clarify uh, the language and, the, and, and what the, the outcomes are and the risks, that's uh, always a benefit. And so uh, I appreciate your, uh, your raising this for, for consideration at the next meeting. Um, anything else in terms of uh, new business? A point of procedure. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Zelka. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I'm, I wanted to ask uh, through you to staff relating to item 37.2 on our new procedures bylaw, having to do with no dealing of notices of motion. I understand mm -hmm. we have the option of voting on this notice of motion immediately uh, under the new provisions of this uh, procedures bylaw, section 37.2. We do, uh, by two thirds majority. I, thank you. By two thirds majority, I just wanted to confirm the, what the proportion was, and uh, I wanted to uh, ask staff how would we uh, go about taking advantage of this if we wanted to do that. Uh, sure, fair enough. Usually, it would be the ask of the mover that would raise it as a point of urgency that it needs to be dealt with immediately. Um, but Ms. Williams, perhaps uh, you can provide a bit more clarity on the process. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Yes, just further to um, your comment about the mover, uh, a motion would be in order to it would need to be moved and seconded to waive the intent of Section 37 of the Council Procedure Bylaw and to proceed to discussion and debate on this matter immediately. And you would, sorry, my apologies, you will require a two thirds majority uh, vote of those council members present. Right, thank you. Uh, Councilor Zelka, does that answer your question? Uh, it, it, it does, and thank you so much for clarifying. I, I wanted to make sure all councillor members knew that we still had that available to us. Uh, and I certainly encourage uh, the mover of the notice of motion to consider moving that. Uh, thank you, Councilor Zelka. Uh, Councilor Patterson, that is up to you. I think uh, based on the conversation I understand today that, that there's going to be work going on in, in the intervening couple of weeks in any case, but uh, Councilor Patterson, did you wish to make any uh, motion to that effect? I, I, I would move that we consider it immediately if that is, uh, is, that is something you're willing to entertain then, Mayor. It's not my choice. You can make the motion. I will. I will move. I will move. I will then move. I will then move that uh, uh, that the the motion uh, as I presented it be considered by council. And I would second that. 
Um, I'm just, do we have a, a, a written version of that motion? Um, maybe, maybe even before we do that, uh, Councilor, can you just motivate a little bit on, because I'm really going to get to the question of whether we're even going to consider this immediately or not uh, pretty quickly. So if you can just explain a little bit about why, why we would consider this motion now versus in, in, say in, on March 8th. Uh, the reason, my my reason for that, Mayor, and, and uh, again, it it is it's the the financial planning meetings um, are the schedule for those are already established, um, and uh, they're somewhat independent of of the council meetings. So it is as as business comes up in those meetings um, where a motion needs to come before council, it doesn't always fit within the the time frame of our new procedural bylaw. Um, and certainly, I, I think I think this is an important um, uh, motion for us to consider as a council, because the long-term financial plans and the um, asset management strategy are living documents. They're they're meant to to continuously be flexible and change to meet um, changes in service levels and and our funding capacity. Um, and so it is, it, I think it's critically important as we, as this is a relatively new process to, um, to council and to residents in the district. Um, and I expect that the long-term financial plan will be extended well beyond the five years to certainly a 15 and 20 year plan in the near time frame. I think it's vitally important that we, um, as a council staff and residents in the community have a have a shared understanding about what the what the terminology means what the different documents so Councillor what... patterson i just want to I, you're speaking to the motion now i just want you to speak to the the rationale for considering it now and not in on march 8th if that's possible you're, you're drifting into the yeah. into the rationale if, for the motion itself if, if we consider it now then i believe it provides for the um uh more time for our district staff to, in fact, apply the the um, uh, the philosophy of the motion um, to get enough detail to for come forward at the next financial plan meeting, so that we can actually see the data and um, uh, gain greater transparency through the information that is presented. Um, whereas, if it, if it waits until March eighth. Um, uh, and staff do not have the direction to move forward with it. Um, it may delay even more um, the, the the just the fulsomeness of the information that comes forward to us with the financial plan. So I think this would be a good time to indicate to them whether um, there are more members of council who support this or not. Uh, thank you, Councilor Patterson. I, I think the 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 key thing here is we need to have enough information to make a decision on the on the motion itself. So perhaps uh, given this ask, uh, I might just go to Mr. Payne if he's uh, uh, available. Uh, Mr. Payne is our, our currently our acting CAO as well as our director of finance tonight as, uh, as Ms. Varela is off today. So um, Mr. Payne, um, just from a, a timeline perspective, with the anticipation if this were to go forward, when would this today or March eighth? How would that impact the, the the bringing back of those changes into the financial plan? Uh, Your Worship, um, there's a couple um, things to comment on about the timing of this information and how it ties in, ties into the financial plan uh, deadline right now. Um, March eighth is actually um, a, a meeting in which council will be in receipt of a couple additional pieces of information. Uh, staff are preparing a PowerPoint information to provide a bit more insight into some of the questions that came out of the last financial planning meeting, um, as well as I believe that there's a report scheduled from the Director of Engineering uh, that relates to uh, asking Council for direction on providing uh, an update to the asset management strategy within quarter two. Uh, so some of that information very much related to, I believe, what the intent of this resolution is. Um, is planned for March 8th, so it, it might be a good fit. In terms of how uh, it, uh, were, were this motion to be um, uh, 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 resolved by council today, um, I, I would have to um, discuss with 
the engineering department and other and other peers in the organization in terms of how soon that information could be provided and if in fact it could be provided before the financial plan was prepared. As mentioned, some of this uh, some of this information, this asset management information, was already planned to be um, uh, provided to council within quarter two, uh, but that is subsequent to the financial plan adoption. Thank you, um, Mr. Payne. I, and Ms. Williams, I, I apologize here. Um, this is my first uh, go at a, at, a, at a motion like this to, uh, to uh, move forward past the notice of motion period. So I'm, I'm not entirely up to speed on the, uh, on the appropriateness of, of the debate on this. Uh, is, is the motion to, uh, for a two thirds to debate the motion uh, urgently, is it, this is I'm, I'm I'm my recollection is this is a debatable motion, but I just want a confirmation that I'm not allowing for debate here when it shouldn't be. Uh, you're correct, your uh, your worship. The motion to uh, have the matter addressed immediately is debatable. Okay, perfect. I just would hate to allow debate and then not really then realize that was against our procedures bylaw. So thanks for that clarification. So um, the motion right now is requiring a two thirds majority is to move. Uh, the motion immediately, uh, as opposed to waiting uh, through the normal notice of motion period. Um, Councillor Patterson, do you have that motion written out and can you share that on your screen? Uh, and Ms. Williams, can she, is, is she able to share her screen to this uh, body? Uh, she can, Your Worship. I have it on my screen. I could share it. Okay, that's probably better, cleaner. So why don't you do that, Ms. Williams, if you could... Okay, are you able to see it? We are, thank you very much for that. So th this is not the motion that we're debating right now. The motion that we're debating right now is whether to debate this motion now or whether we should uh, follow a normal course of uh, process and debate it on March 8th. So with that, I have Councillor, uh, Councillor Zelka, you seconded it. So I'll go to you first and then Councillor Green. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, so uh, the debate for me is that uh, I consider this to be time sensitive. Uh, and yet relatively, uh, um, uh, uh, I guess, uh, relatively small, uh, uh, since I, 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 I wouldn't be looking for a lot of wording changes. Uh, I like the fact that it speaks specifically to harmonizing terminology uh, across some of our reports. And uh, let me just point out one of the um, uh, uh, questions that I've been getting, uh, which uh, led me to believe that, that this was necessary uh, and, uh, and as a result, uh, important. Uh, I've heard uh, some members of the public say in our current financial uh, uh, plan that uh, oh, asset replacement funding progress, we're gonna be at 100% by 2024. Great, uh, why are we spending all of that money to replace all of the assets by 2024? Now, most of us around this table know that 100% replacement by 2024 means 2% of our assets will be replaced per year starting 2024. But some members of the public think that means 100% of our assets are being replaced starting on 2024. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really just a matter of cleaning up the wording to make it a, maybe a little more plain, um, which is what I would be looking for. And that's why I wish to uh, 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 bring this forward sooner instead of later. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Zelka. Uh, Councillor Green. Yes, thank you, Mayor. And, and thank you to Councillor Patterson for bringing this forward. Um, for me, and I, I guess I'm going back to my default uh, um, position, I, I certainly support this in principle, but I would like the time between now and March the 8th to uh, think about it and, and, and discuss it, perhaps with, with Councillor Patterson or, or with others, if that's possible. But um, we, we've always had an unwritten practice, procedural bylaw or not, that out of courtesy, we give ourselves um, notice about motions and, and there's a reason for that. And so that, you know, people feel prepared. So that that's my comment. I would I would prefer that it, it go to the March 8th meeting as originally, uh, I, I believe it was originally planned. Um, I and but I appreciate that there, there, there are time sensitive issues in it. However, I, I guess I feel in principle, it, to be fair to staff and, and to one another, um, and, and to you also, Mayor, I think it would be preferable to wait until March the 8th. I would certainly like time to uh, process it and integrate it into my, into my thinking, but I am supportive in principle, absolutely. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Councillor Green. And again, I don't want to talk too much to the motion <laughs> uh, that's there, just to the deferral. So, just uh, I want to limit comments in terms of. I guess it's it. That was nothing. Nothing wrong said there, but I want to stay away from debating the merits of or not lack thereof of the motion. I just want to focus on whether or not we should, as a as a body, uh, move it forward for debate tonight. Councillor Braithwaite. Uh, thanks. That I'll then just say ditto to what Councillor Green said. <laughs> okay. Uh, that speeds things along, Councillor Appleton. Uh, thank you, Worship. With respect to being able to advance this now, um, I, I don't have an issue with moving it forward at this meeting. Um, I think that it's uh, that uh, the content is is supportable, and I think that there are some definitely some. Uh, uh, as Council has noted, we have uh, not completed our financial plan discussions in the time frame that was originally allotted. So the process is, is dragging out and is putting extra uh, pressure, I'm, I'm certain, on staff. So if this can get expedited such that it allows them some more time to work on the implications thereof, then, then I'm in support of, of addressing it now. Thank you, Councillor Appleton. Uh, Councillor Nay. Well, um, if, if I'm understanding this, uh, I, I will speak to the motion that's on the table, Mr. Mayor, is, is that what we're asking are some general principles of, you know, around transparency and, and uh, harmonizing terminology, defining risk. And I, I, I guess this is really just feedback to staff about the current state of the financial plan. So, I, you know, for me, you know, I, I, I think already staff can probably hear this and respond to the, 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 this kind of feedback. I, I, I think, you know, we as council can give specific feedback at our meeting. So I guess what I'm saying, I, I, I really have no problem if, with passing this as it, as it is, because I, I think it's, it's just sort of focuses staff attention around um, some of the revisions that are going on right now. And if they can't do it, they're going to tell us that, you know, if it's not in the scope of the work they're able to do as of the next meeting. So, so I'm okay to, 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 to bring this uh, motion forward now, if, if that's uh, the will of the council. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Ney. Uh, Councillor Green, did you have anything else to add? No, I, you know, I, I, I respect the comments from everyone and, and um, I, I just wanted to make the point that we have notices of motion for a reason and, and I understood this was coming on March 8th. I, I'm, not, I'm not completely hung up about it, but I, I just want to say that I, I think courtesy to both um, council, to mayor and staff is always um, a good practice, that's all. And I'm not saying this is discourteous, it's just that... <laughs> I'm, well, I'm going deeper. I, I just feel, I guess I felt I just needed time to, to more fully understand it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Green. Um, I'll just throw my two cents in here. I, I, I don't support the motion to, to, to advance it tonight. Um, really, I think the... Um, I think the staff deserve to have some time to look at these motions and uh, give us their appropriate... Uh, thoughtful feedback if there is aspects of this motion that might cause them more work or less or might fit into some work plans at some other point. Um, I would like to hear that and I think by raising it at, at the motion and at one meeting and, and having that debate in the same meeting, um, it robs uh, council and the public and staff of the time to sort of take and, and consider uh, prior to the meeting. Um, I don't mind moving things forward quickly where it's necessary, but we have time in our financial planning process to consider this. And I think that um, just to get fulsome feedback from staff on what this would actually mean, um, I know from talking to uh, already that that most of this can be can be brought in fairly easily, but I think there might be some some aspects that might cause uh, some additional work or might fit better into some other reports uh, than the financial plan. And so I just I'd like to hear that from staff. And I think that uh, the only reason for moving things forward quickly is if there's a critical need to it has to meet a timeline or there's some some specific urgency to it that requires that. So I can't support the motion to uh, to advance the debate tonight. Um, 
but if this if this uh, passes, then I will talk to the main motion if that's the case. So um, I have uh, Councillor Zelka, Patterson, and then Green. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, and uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Council. This has been uh, fascinating. Uh, I uh, need uh, to understand, uh, with respect to the timeliness aspect of this motion, um, how many more meetings will we have to discuss the financial plan before it gets uh, locked in and into a bylaw? Uh, I, I, I'm un unsure. It seems like there's only one more meeting before we basically have the meeting to pass the bylaw. Could, uh, could uh, uh, staff please clarify? Sure, thank you, Councillor Zelka. Um, Mr. Payne, perhaps you can give a, a timeline in terms of uh, when this would come back and, and, the, and when we could consider uh, aspects of this uh, for final approval of the financial plan. Uh, yes, Your Worship, the, the plan um, uh, so far has been that the um, financial plan wrap up would occur on March 8th. Um, if council were to um, make their approval of a financial plan contingent on this information, it's, you know, it's very doubtful that information could be provided by March 8th. Um, when we move into April, we usually um, uh, move into first, second, third reading uh, in late April with final adoption in May. Uh, it may be possible uh, that uh, this information could be provided to council in that time frame. Um, however, if, if that information uh, results in council wanting changes to the financial plan that would result in a special meeting essentially. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I, I don't know where council would sit on that. I don't think we can debate that in the course of this. I think we, um, um, I, I understand the intention of this is more for clarifying information than decision-making pieces, but th that may change with information that's clarified. So I don't want to preclude anything here. Go ahead, Councillor Zelka, you still had the, uh, the floor. Thank you. So it sounds like uh, the next meeting about financial plan where we really have a chance to, to, to uh, talk Turkey and, uh, and, and get into some nitty gritties is March 8th. Um, uh, if we don't deal with this issue today, when will we deal with this issue uh, and if we then pass it at that next meeting, whatever that next council meeting is, will there be time for this March 8th meeting? Sure, thank you, Councilor Zelka. Mr. Payne, when would, if, uh, if the, I guess both ways, if the notice of motion is debated and passes tonight, what would happen on March 8th? If it doesn't pass tonight, but there's a motion on the floor for consideration on March 8th, what would happen on March 8th? Again, hard because you're putting you on the spot here. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, but if you can't answer, that'd be appreciated. Uh, Your Worship, I, I don't think that whether this motion gets uh, debated and passed tonight or debated and passed on March 8th makes a difference to the timeframe for when uh, staff can deliver that information. So the, the, when we can deliver the information, um, um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't change. Um, you know, what, what, uh, what, what's forthcoming, like I said, is an asset management strategy update in Q2. So that was already within the work plan. If council directs that this information be provided prior to that, uh, we'd have to look at making that possible. Okay, thank you, Mr. Payne. Uh, Councillor Zelke, you still have the floor. You're good, go ahead, Councillor Patterson. Yes, thank you, Mayor. And I do appreciate the, uh, the comments of, of uh, my colleagues uh, around the council table. Um, and, and certainly, uh, you know, I respect that notices, there is a procedure for notices of motion. Um, this is more time sensitive, I felt, simply because we are in financial plan discussions. And I, I guess I will echo the comments of Councillor Zelka that um, I, I'm, I'm fine letting this come to at the um, council meeting at March 8th, uh, but it is, it is very much information um, uh, that I would be seeking as a member of council to support um, the financial plan. Um, and, you know, I, I, would, I would like to do that as fully as possible. Um, and in, certainly in consideration the policies that are outlined within the financial plan itself. So that is my intent. Um, I, I hear what Mr. Payne is saying though, and there will be more information um, coming forward. I can't, you know, there's no, there is no, um, uh, 
no evidence before me to identify what that will be and, and what my, my, um, my opinion will be at that time. Uh, but I know that there is, staff are expecting that on March 8th, the financial plan would be approved. And I, I don't wanna to commit to, to doing that without having more fulsome information. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Are there any other debate on the motion to advance the debate on this motion to tonight? So a motion, a uh, vote in favor here, uh, will open the debate on the motion this evening. A motion uh, in opposition uh, will have this debated uh, at the March 8th meeting. Uh, so with seeing no other hands, I will call the question. All those in favor of advancing this debate to this evening? I have uh, Councillor uh, Patterson and Councillor Zelka, although I, no hands as a vote in affirmation, and those opposed? So that's uh, that's uh, Murdoch, Green, Nay, Appleton, and Braithwaite opposed. So this will uh, be brought forward in the normal notice of motion process, Councillor Patterson, and we will uh, uh, have that fulsome discussion on the 8th. And I know staff will have uh, a better handle on terms of what this will look like at that meeting. So I look forward to that debate. And again, I appreciate you bringing this forward. Uh, I certainly support the, the intentions behind it. Um, that then is the last uh, anything other new business before i call before we move to adjournment not seeing any okay then uh all, move I just adjournment. Adjourn, moved and seconded did i see a seconder yes thank you uh thank you very much everyone i'll call the question all those in favor any opposed rarely anybody opposed that concludes our meeting thank you so much and uh yeah we'll see you at our next regularly scheduled meeting which i can't remember off the top of my head i think it's uh yeah, I'll leave it at that. It's in our schedule. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank Good night. You. Good night.